Hi, this is Ed Kohler with Extreme Networks. And as I indicated on my last video during my whiteboard session, I indicated that I would follow up with specific sessions for each of our remote teleworking solutions. And uh, true to the agenda that we used in the whiteboard, we're going to uh, follow that same order. So we're going to talk about extending Fabric Connect to network locations first. Obviously, this is a very pertinent trend. State and local governments are currently acquiring locations that can be quickly turned into overflow hospital capacity. This can be anything from uh, spare shopping uh, center stores to uh, to hotels, to pop-up facilities, and uh, there's also been a lot of activity setting up very temporary pop-up tents to assist with COVID-19 testing. The requirement to extend connectivity to these temporary locations is actually very pertinent right now, and we have to realize that particularly in the, uh, the COVID-19 pop-up facilities, they can be incredibly mobile. Uh, so they may be somewhere for a few days and then move on, uh, perhaps a week. Uh, and uh, after that, they're, they're going to be moving on to a new location. So this provides uh, some real dynamic requirements uh, for the healthcare institutions involved. Now, Fabric Connect is a very agile networking technology. Uh, and in certain times, we need adaptive and highly secure networks. Now, the good part of the story is that uh, this is a normal state of affairs within our healthcare networks. Uh, many of the major healthcare networks in this country run Fabric Connect, not only between hospitals within municipal areas, but across state boundaries. Dozens of states sometimes are tied together in one cohesive fabric mesh. Um, not only is that the case in the United States, uh, that is the case globally as well. There are some countries' healthcare networks um, that are completely wholly run by Fabric Connect. And there's a few reasons for this. First of all, the agility, the moves, ads, and changes, uh, uh, the a need to extend services, very, very agile, uh, very nimbly and almost effortless. That is key, particularly now. Uh, and this means applications can be deployed faster and with greater ease. Network segmentation, which is key at this point for security, can be done at a greater scale and with a greater inherent security level. And I've talked about the benefits of Fabric Connect from a security perspective. I am not going to talk about that. Really, what I'm going to talk about here is how we can take these values and extend them out to remote locations. But before we do that, we have to think about cybersecurity. It is more important than ever. Believe it or not, there are folks that are taking advantage of this crisis. There are increased events of phishing. Uh, there are fake emails from CDC, fake emails from FEMA, fake government emails promising the rebates uh, for the, the economic recovery package. Um, there have been denial of service attacks against healthcare, and there's also been several ransomware attacks. So we need to realize that while we do need to extend a very dynamic and remote footprint, uh, we have to keep security in mind. We, we just can't do it through open doors. And uh, this is kind of culminated with a slide I show almost every presentation on security, and that is the NSA's recommendations, limit access to important systems, segment networks and data, and uh, implement application whitelisting. So this is stuff that we need to do um, with traditional networking technology. It's hard to do this and do it, you know, effortlessly. It, it requires a lot of setup and configuration. And that's really where Fabric Connect comes in, particularly when you marry Fabric Connect with policy and network access control. Uh, while Fabric Connect itself provides the overall core transport, the individual hyper segmentation to separate communities of interest, it also leverages on native stealth technology because it doesn't use IP in the core. It is an end-to-end -end Ethernet fabric, next generation forwarding capabilities. And then finally, the concept of automatic elasticity, which I'll come back to shortly. When we add that with policy and network access control, we have the ability to control access to these hyper segments. We can even do dynamic creation of network segments and uh, as users and devices are onboarded to the network. And then, of course, we apply policies to those users and devices. And that gets to the notion of automatic elasticity, which is very, very key rem for remote site connectivity. When someone comes into the remote site and they log into the network and they require network services, Fabric Connect will automatically, elastically extend the service out to the individual or group of people as long as they need it. Once they disconnect, uh, 
For instance, once the facility shuts down or once some key physicians leave the facility, those segments which might have been dedicated to those individuals would be retracted dynamically according to the policy. So it really does make an effortless extension of very secure, highly granular network micro segments. Now, the extensions across the WAN with Fabric Extend are actually fairly easy in concept. What we do is we take the Ethernet protocol of Fabric Connect and we basically run it inside of VXLAN, which allows us to do a number of things. We can use L3 uh, transports. Uh, we can run across third-party networks, um, IP networks or campus backbones internet or routed MPLS, and we can take services and transparently extend Fabric Connect L2, L3 with only endpoint provisioning. Now, it's important to remember it's one tunnel that can extend many services and segments. And again, these services and segments are elastic. Use cases are data center interconnects, uh, fabric islands, uh, interconnection of remote locations. Now, many people who look at this solution are obviously people who already have Fabric Connect, but I do want to note that with just the nodes I'm going to talk about in this presentation, you could build a very lightweight, remote, extensive Fabric Connect infrastructure. And in order to do this, we need lighter weight platforms. And uh, introducing the Extreme Access Platform 1400, it is a new WAN access device for distributed enterprise. It provides fabric services, segmentation, extension over multiple WAN types, powered by something called Fabric Connect VPN. And we'll talk a little bit about the details on that. It's basically an IP sec encapsulation of the actual NNI. Now, there are two models to this box. Uh, first of all, the small branch appliance, which is the XA1440 about 100 megabits uh, WAN bandwidth with, uh, with four core processors. Mid-size branch, the XA1480 with up to 500 megabits bandwidth uh, and, uh, and eight cores. Uh, note that the eight core, the XA1480, will be enabled with a guest VM architecture in the future, which would be certainly very handy for a remote branch type facility. Now, I'm not gonna go into a lot of details on the product. Um, there are presentations that are very specific to this. Rather than do that, I want to talk about the use modes. Uh, we can, first of all, run it as a Fabric Extend over the service provider WAN. So at that point, we're treating it more or less like a small VSP box, and we're just placing it out at the remote site. We're assuming that you're able to support the WAN MTU uh, requirements, and at that point, you do not require fragmentation or reassembly. However, for many remote sites, you may not have that convenience, and you may be running over just public internet. At that point, you will be forced into two things. First of all, usually lower bandwidth profile files, and then secondarily, uh, the need to uh, support fragmentation and reassembly. And then also we have to realize that we would want encryption at that point, and that's where we use IPsec to protect the sessions over the internet connections. Now, to go further, let's just show a real world deployment example, something that's happening now as we speak. I'm not going to use the customer's name, but basically a state and local government is using uh, secure network extensions to have pop-up locations from municipal governments uh, out to uh, existing COVID drive up facilities. And uh, this is being done actively as we speak. Now, there is another platform I do want to mention, and that is the VSP 4900. This is a lightweight box as well, can be used for remote locations, typically mid sized to larger, uh, and also areas where you would be over a service provider WAN that would support the MTU requirements and not require fragmentation or reassembly. It is basically the next generation replacement for the VSP4850, which was a very, very popular platform for our Fabric Connect customers. Um, this is a next generation platform. It does support the inside architecture, so certain models do support the guest VM architecture. It provides campus fabric, Metro Edge, and WAN access solutions all in one box. It does support multicast, uh, so it will support video surveillance deployments, and I'll go a little bit further into that on the follow-up slide, but keep in mind the uplinks. Now we're dealing with significant bandwidth capabilities, 10 gig or 25 gig uplinks with 256 MACSEC options. Again, rather than go into details on the box, I want to talk about the solution itself. On the far right-hand side, we see a small site where we're using a 1400 and we're using frag fragmentation or reassembly 
FE and IPsec. So fabric extend and IPsec with fragmentation and reassembly, uh, providing bandwidth out to a very small remote location. Um, now in the center, we can see that the 4900 and the 1400 are paired. And note how there is a blue line between the two and the term NNI, that is a normal network to network interface, which means that the XA4400 can work in a campus mode as well. So we see that the XA1400 has a fragmented a fragmented uh, fabric extend IPsec tunnel going into the internet. And then the 4900 has a normal fab fabric extend um, NNI that's going in through the private WAN MPLS environment. Now, the XA1400 series supports almost all of the services that Fabric Connect will support, normal VSP nodes, with the exception of multicasts. And that's the reason why I'm highlighting this on this slide. Note how this center site needs IP video surveillance, which often requires multicast. At that point, you would use the VSP4900. The XC1400 will support multicast sometime in the future. Now, on the far left-hand side, we see that the 1400 can also dual home itself. So it has a normal fabric extend connection to the private WAN MPLS. And then it's also using a fragmented fa fabric extend connection protected by IPsec out to the internet. And here, in order to get the scaling for that site, we're basically introducing an ERS or an XOS switch. And you may want to do that for PoE, wireless, whatever the case may be, in order to get the port densities uh, that you require. Uh, so this kind of shows how the products can be used in combination. As you can see, it's a very flexible type of model, uh, can implement and deploy Fabric Connect, all of its power directly out to remote locations with minimal or almost effortless delivery. Thank you very much for your time. And above all, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay active.